The woman on the embassy phone said, there has been no circumstances where we have given someone who's not from Cyprus a allowance to go into China. At that point, we were like, what are we going to do? Like, it's going to cost so much for her to go back to South Africa and then get an HTC code and then book another flight. Our hands felt really tired at that point. Hello, everyone. George here. How you all doing? I'm coming to you here from china where i'm currently in quarantine as you can see my glorious room so today i wanted to speak to you all about how it is i got into china and i'm not going to give you a crazy long intro because i know that those of you who are watching this for a purpose are probably like racing to get some information and wanting to get that key information so today i'm going to try my very best to come to you with the information that i have based on how i got into china so basically for those of you on here you're probably trying to get back into china because you're working here you're either a teacher or you're doing some kind of job here and you've gone out of china to visit your families or to do something that you had to do and now you have to come back in and obviously at the moment, well, obviously for those of us who are trying to get in, at the moment we are not able just to go in. We have to go through certain processes in order to get in. Most other countries, I think almost every other country is either partially open or completely open, where China is still not accepting tourism. And for those of us who work in China, we require a green health code to be able to go back into China. And so in order to do that, you have to do various PCR tests and fill in various forms, get approval from embassies. So it's a little bit of a challenge. Throughout this video, I'll be referring to this code as either an HDC code or a green code. And that basically is a code that allows you to get back into the country showing that you do not have COVID. So I'm going to talk to you about my story and what I did to get back in, the route I took to get out, and then how it is I got back in. And I'll try and include as many details as I can. For those of you who are a little bit bewildered and confused, don't worry, I was there too. I was equally as bewildered and confused, but now I'm here, it's a reality, you can do it. And to be honest, I got into some really difficult situations where it seemed like I couldn't get in or I wasn't going to get in and I still did manage to. So if you feel like it's hopeless, don't worry, you can get in and there is a way. So. I'll start from the very beginning. I'm a teacher and I am based in Nantong, China. So that's where I started my journey. I flew from uh, Shanghai, which is a city in a neighboring province, uh, from Shanghai. And I actually went to visit my parents in Thailand, in Koh Samui. So my purpose of the whole trip was to visit family, but also to meet my girlfriend's parents and then for her to meet mine. So she's from South Africa. So my plan was to first go to Thailand, see my parents, and then go down to South Africa. Now she didn't join me to Thailand. She went straight to South Africa. So I went to Thailand, she went to South Africa. I spent a couple of weeks in Thailand, fine, no issues there. Didn't have to do anything for HTC code there. And then I went to South Africa to meet her family. Didn't have to do anything for HTC code there either. But when we left, this is where we made a little bit of a mistake. What we didn't realize is because Taryn is a South African passport holder, I'm a British passport holder, by the way, if you couldn't tell by my accent, she was supposed to get a HDC code, her first HDC code from her home country. In order to get one, you need to get, in most countries, you need to get a PCR test 48 hours before the flight and 24 hours before the flight and then you send it off to the embassy so we didn't do that and so i think it was literally at the airport she told me uh, george it says this on the regulations i'm gonna have to get um, a green code from south africa and i said oh it's fine you know me being me i just was like oh it's fine don't worry about it we'll figure out it out when we get there not realizing just how important it was to do so because most of the time it's like you know something comes up and then you figure it out so we didn't have an hdc code leaving south africa so then we both headed to cyprus and we were planning to spend at least a couple of weeks there 
Um, but we weren't sure because our next destination was China. So we were like, okay, we're going to have to figure out how to get the HTC code and then book a flight. And so um, we weren't sure if it was going to be two weeks or three weeks. All we knew is that we were going to be in Cyprus mid July and probably head back to China around the beginning of August. Now, um, flights were really, really expensive. They were like 35,000 RMB. They were like 20,000 RMB, which I think is like something like 3,000 pounds, 4,000 pounds, all the way up to like 6,000 British pounds. So really, really expensive flights. And I was being like super optimistic and I was like, oh, don't worry. Like flights are gonna cheapen. It's all gonna be fine. Just chill. So I was like, just enjoying my holiday. And I was like, whatever, like one day a flight's gonna come up, it's gonna be cheap. But time went on and time was getting closer and closer to us needing to get to work. We have to be back on the 24th of August and nothing was coming up. And so I decided eventually, okay, right, we've got to start figuring this out. So I got in contact with the Cyprus embassy. So if you're in whatever country you're from and you need to get into China, get in contact with your embassy. So either give them a ring, check their availabilities because opening times with embassies are always really weird. And like every time I check their clothes, so make sure you find the right time to call them or give them an email. They usually are very responsive. As I called them and I said, hi, listen, we've got this situation. I'm a Cypriot national. Okay, so I know I'm a British passport holder, but I'm a, I'm a dual national. My girlfriend is a South African national. And so uh, we both need HDC codes. And what they said is, it's not possible for her to get an HDC code because you haven't gotten it from her originating country. And we were like, no, that can't be true. So we check with my HR, who's Chinese, and I said, please, can you talk to the embassy and tell them we're not in South Africa, so we can't get this HCC code. So can you explain to them and so we can find a way? So my HR spent a couple of days trying to talk to them and he said, we got an email back and unfortunately she can't get that HCC code to get back in unless she goes back to South Africa. And I was like, what? No, there is no way she is going back all the way, like, I don't know, like, what was it? 12, 13 hours all the way back to South Africa just so she can get an HTC code. No, that is not happening. So basically we pushed and pushed. I gave the embassy another call. And I was like, hey, listen, you know, by any circumstance, because my HR told me, listen, uh, maybe you'll be able to get approval if you push or if you, you know, give, show them your situation, tell them you didn't realize, tell them, you know, she's been there for a while. She's got a tourist visa. And I spoke to the lady and she was like, it's not possible. And I was like, yes, but if you understand, like she's here now, she won't be able to go back to South Africa. She has a Chinese work permit. We both have work permits. Um, is it, and I was like, is it possible? And she's like, stop talking to me about European passport, about uh, South Africa passport. I'm not interested. I'm only interested with Cyprus citizenship. Like she literally said it to me like that. I was like, okay <laughs> and so we were at that point we were like what are we gonna do like it's gonna cost so much for her to go back to south africa and then get an hdc code and then book another flight flights are super expensive so our hands felt really tired at that point but alas we kept pushing and that's what you have to do in these situations you don't take things at face value which i'll talk about a little bit later so i pushed and so i sent an email to the embassy and i sent all of her documents and my documents saying this is our situation she's got a tourist visa these are all her documents we work here she's got a work permit in china i mean we work in china so what can you do and uh, he said, okay, please send these documents, please send this information, please send that uh, information. And literally, by the grace of God, they approved it. He said, okay, I've spoken to my director and it is possible for her to uh, get an HDC code from Cyprus. So we were so happy. We were like, woo, yes, 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 it's possible. So that hurdle was uh, surpassed, which we were really happy about. Then we had to find our flights. So flights, as I said, were really, really expensive. Uh, my parents who also work in China or are now going to work in China already booked a flight uh, before um, and it was like 20,000 RMB. So we were like, okay, we're willing to pay 20,000 RMB but we can't afford any more. So we found a flight for 20,000 RMB and I believe it was from Cyprus transiting through Athens and then to China. But the flight was for the 24th, I think, of August 
And our HR basically told us, no, we need you there earlier. And I said to them, we can get there earlier, but flights are super expensive. They're way more expensive than 20,000 and we can't afford it. We found a flight transiting through Madrid and we found a flight transiting through Paris. We tried so many other flights, but the problem is that my girlfriend had a South African passport and many of those countries you can't leave the airports in with a South African passport. And so for example, with Madrid, you can't leave the airport uh, to take the PCR test. And we asked them, is there a PCR test center in the airport? And there wasn't. And when you're doing transit to China, you have to do a PCR test at your transit place to get another HDC code. It's really complicated. So you have to get an HDC code in your beginning country, an HDC code in your transiting country, and then get to China. So you can do as many transits as you want. You just have to get PCR tests and apply for your HDC code in each transit country and your home country. So it was important to us to either get a transit country that Taryn was able to leave the airport for so we could get a PCR test or find a transit country where their PCR test centers were in the transit location, in the transit duty-free area. So <laughs> it is as complicated as it sounds. And so we found one in Athens, one in Madrid and one in Abu Dhabi transit. None of them worked. The one with Abu Dhabi turned out to be a charter flight. The one with Athens, our school wanted us to be there earlier. The one with Madrid, my girlfriend couldn't get out of. So we were up in arms, we're like, what we were gonna do? So I remember having one sleepless night and I woke up early and I was like messaging my HR. I'm like, oh, what do we do, what do we do? We almost booked the Madrid one. I was like, just book it, book it. And then I was like, wait, 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 let me check with the airport if she can actually leave and she couldn't. And then anyway, long story short, we end up getting a ticket from Cyprus to Dubai to China. We found one, it was 35,000 RMB and our school was like, we were like, we can't afford it. But luckily our school was like, okay, we'll pay for you now and then we'll take it out of your salary incrementally. So we decided, we decided to do that and it worked, thank goodness. So it was an Emirates flight on the third, oh, sorry, it was on the 12th of August, uh, we got to, to Dubai and then it was a Sichuan Airlines flight to China. So we're really happy about that. Uh, so then the next thing was just to enjoy the rest of our holiday. So we, so we planned that, that was like early August we booked that flight. So we had a little bit more time and then come PCR test time. So for us, um, and I believe it's generally for uh, the regulations for, for entering China is that in the home country, you have to get two PCR tests 148 hours before, 124 hours before the flight, but they also have to be two separate laboratories that are both accredited by the local health um, authorization department. So you have to find that and on the Chinese website, the Chinese consulate in your country, it usually will have it listed all of the laboratories listed. So we had to book that, but then you have to make sure that the PCR test centers give you test results soon. So you can't really get a PCR test where they're going to give you the test result in 24 hours because that because then because then you have to get the next PCR test. So you have to make sure that you get a PCR test center that gives you the results between two to four hours, six hours max. And so we had to find that. So we found two PCR test centers and we booked them in advance. So we our flight was at 8 p.m. on the 12th. So then we got a PCR test on the 11th at 8 a.m. and then on the 12th at 8 uh, 30 a.m so it doesn't have to be exactly 24 hours be before the flight it just has to be within 24 hours before the flight and then within 48 hours before the flight but then each test has to be 24 hours apart so yeah it's a bit complicated but i hope that makes sense so yeah we were really nervous about that because we were like oh gosh if we have covid this is all going to be a shambles so if you're feeling nervous about the fact that you might have covid and if the covid happens then you're not going to get the pcr test i completely understand but i would just say just make sure you've got your masks on before the pcr test like a week before so you're extra careful don't go into crowds and just yeah because we weren't afraid of the illness we were just afraid of the results because then if it was uh, positive then we'd have a whole other issue on our hands but thank goodness both were negative 
So then we went on to Dubai and actually it turned out really nice because we got to have a three day holiday in Dubai. Uh, we booked two different PCR test centers. The second one actually came to us, which was really cool. I don't know if that's just a Dubai thing because they're all about luxury, but um, yeah, they, they came to us and did the test for us in our hotel room so that was really cool so we got those two pcr tests and then we had to apply for the health code again so applying for the hdc code you have to apply for it in each transit place you're in so there's this link that i'll put in the description box below that you click on and then you have to register and then, then it will ask you to fill in the form and it basically asks you all the information like for your passport your chinese work permit for your flight details pcr test results it asks you just all the information about your travels and your personal information and if you're married and you'd like to do it for your wife or your husband as well on the same registered account you can do that so it makes it quite simple because then you've got both codes on the same uh, account and then you want to it starts off once you've once you've applied for everything the code starts off orange and then it goes green when it's been approved and then if both of you've done it on the same account you can, you can sort of swipe uh, so that you can see both so it's very simple then you don't have to log in to two different accounts uh, so we had to do that in cyprus so as soon as we got the pcr test on the 12th we had to quickly apply and then wait for them to approve. It takes them a few hours to approve. We were actually getting a bit nervous for those ones because in Cyprus, because they were taking a while to do it. So I had to call the embassy and they said, we're doing it, we're doing it, just be patient. And then about three hours before the flight, it was approved. In Dubai, it was much quicker when we applied, it was within the hour. Then we made it to the airport in Dubai. And then uh, when we got to check in, oh my goodness, all I would say is make sure you're there early because because when we got there, we we feel like we felt like we had just entered China. We had left Dubai and just entered China. It was just crowds and crowds and crowds of locals and us. We were like the only ones. And if you live in China, you'll know that oftentimes you get stared at. And so we started being stared at again. And we're like, oh gosh, we're already in China before we even <laughs> before we even entered. And so. Um, actually, a really nice guy spoke to us and asked us, oh, you're going to China? Why are you going to China? But anyway, that's neither here nor there, but that was really nice. But while we were in the queue, uh, some, I don't know, officials or something came up to us and asked us, okay, do you have your green code, your HDC code? So we showed them our HDC code, uh, our travel itinerary, and they wanted to see our PCR test. And then they asked who actually booked our tickets for us. And then once they checked all of that, they gave us a red stamp. And then getting through to actually checking in, oh my goodness, it was just like so many people pushing and stuff. So you, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. So then we start pushing and getting through, everything was fine. Then we got to check in, they checked in our luggage. We were lucky, I think for most of you, it should be the same. We got uh, 23 kg, two checked in baggage allowed. So two checked in baggage of 23 kg. And my girlfriend, her baggage was, one of them was 29 kg. Um, so they said that if she didn't have a second one, they would charge her. But because she had a second one, it added up to under uh, 46 kg. So it was fine. So as long as it adds up to under 46 kg and you've got two luggage, you should be fine. So then we finally got through. They also checked our work permits and green codes and stuff. We finally got through, got to boarding. Um, and in boarding, uh, it was pretty smooth, but there was a little bit of like a system error. So all of the foreigners got put to the side. There were about four of us or five of us because of visa checking or something. And it was a malfunction on their part. So that probably won't happen to you, it happened to us. So that was a little bit nerve wracking. We're like, what's going on? Are we gonna get on this flight? We managed to get on the flight. Now on the flight, on the flight, do not expect like air hostesses in lovely outfits being all polite and stuff. No, that's not gonna happen. They were in full white protective bodyguard uh, suits and you know they you go in your food is like in the, a little compartment in that little front glove compartment thing and it had like bread and water and sweet bread and random stuff it was not not hugely appetizing appetizing i think i could put a picture here for you to see and then no earphones there was entertainment but no earphones no blankets so it just feels like this charter flight, like very cold situation. So if you 
you get hungry on flights and stuff, make sure you bring in food. The earphone thing, I don't know if an aux cable would have worked in there, but it didn't work for us. And so then they, um, you know, you, obviously you have to wear your masks. My mask came off at some point. And so I was tapped on, he's like, put on your mask. So it's been a very strict about mask wearing. And then we, the flight was fine. We flew there. And then when we got there, we had to wait for quite some time, about half an hour, 45 minutes. Some officials came on, checked things. And then when we got off, they actually sprayed our bags. They was just spraying all over the place. Good news is when you get your PCR test, when you get to the airport, they don't give you the nose one. I know a lot of people hate that. I absolutely despise it. So thankfully they only do it in the throat. So that was really good. And then we got on a bus and we got taken here and it turned out really, really nice. I mean, I love my quarantine room. It's really like, I don't know, it's really comfortable and classy and nice. Like I couldn't ask for a better quarantine hotel room. Um, I know some people haven't had as nice an experience. I'm really, really blessed and thankful that I do have a nice experience. The only thing I wish I brought was Dettol wipes because you know, when you eat and sometimes it gets all messy, I wish I could have wiped, had more. I have, a, I have some hygiene wipes, I'm using those, but I just wish I would have packed more wipes and clean, uh, clean, cleaning things. I do have um, lots and lots of snacks that I prepared for because I have quarantined in China before, so I knew to bring snacks. Um, another cool thing is that they said I am able to order an HDMI wire for this big boy TV, this bad boy. Uh, so I've actually ordered an HDMI wire. That's the cool thing about China. You can just order things, but you're not allowed to order food, they told me here. The food is not great, I'm not gonna lie. But as I said, I did bring other stuff. I bought some like tuna salad things in tins and stuff. So when the food's not great, I just have that. It's a hit and miss. But I'm just glad to be here because it was a real challenge trying to get in here. I really hope that I have included all of the details that I needed to. Before I do go, I did want to give you just some key tips when trying to get into China to think about because I know the stress you have to go through for it. So I hope these tips help. Let me just quickly, I wrote it on my iPad, so let me just quickly get it. So, the first tip is check the regulations on the consulate site early. So had me and my girlfriend check the regulations on the South Africa Chinese consulate site early, we would have known that she had to get the green code. So just make sure before you're flying and everything, make sure at least 14 days early, you check the consulate site. So to find the consulate site, just go on Google. If you're in Turkey, say Turkey, China consulate. If you're in Algeria, say Algeria, Turkey consulate. Number two is make sure your PCR test center gives you results fast and is accredited. As of course, the test center sometimes do 12 hours, 24 hours results. That's what happened with Dubai. So just make sure you make a point of that and make sure they give you them early. You might have to pay a little bit more for that, but it's very necessary. The third one is prepare for quarantine, make sure you have food, make sure you have all of the cleaning products and just everything you need. Sometimes when you're preparing, you're in a comfortable position so you don't feel what you might need, but just more, more is more in this situation because you might think, nah, it'll be fine, but then once you're in quarantine, there's no getting out. And if you've really needed something, you'll, you'll feel the need for it even more and it will be frustrating. So just make sure you get more than what you need. The fourth one is to join WeChat groups for advice. So I'm gonna try and just put some barcodes around here that you can scan. Sorry guys, I just realized that if a group on WeChat exceeds 200 members, then I can't share the barcode. But if you'd like to be part of one of the groups, just message me or leave a comment and I will add you to one of them. I have one for the Paris routes and South Africa one, and I think a Greece one. So just if you, you can scan these barcodes and then once you're in there, if it's for another country, just message in the group and people are really helpful. They'll say on WeChat, oh, I have the group for, for Bangkok. So, and then they'll put you into it and then you, loads of people are in the same position as you and they'll be asking questions and answering questions. So join those groups, that will really help. And then the fifth one is don't take anything at face value. And this is more of a life motto for me, not just a situa this situation type of thing. And what I mean by that is when somebody tells you something's not possible, don't just accept the first answer because the next person will tell you it is possible. 
I found this so many times, more times than not. If someone says there is no, the woman on the embassy phone said, there has been no circumstances where we have given someone who's not from Cyprus a uh, allowance to go into China. And we managed to get her an allowance. So if we listened to that woman, we never would have gotten here. But the fact that we didn't take what she said at face value helped us get here. So just make sure you check all routes, ask every single person you need to ask, check all websites, don't take no for an answer, keep pushing and you will get it if you really want it. So that's the last thing I wanted to say. I hope that this uh, serves some help, some support for the situation. I know it's really tough, but you will get here. It wasn't a typical situation for us, you know, with my girlfriend being a South African, not being a local in Cyprus. So we were in one of the more challenging situations and we managed to get here. So you will be able to get here. Just keep working at it. Keep being persistent every single day and you'll make it. All right. Cool. I hope that helped. Please, if you have any other questions or any details that I didn't include or you need clarification on something, just put it down in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And I hope that helped and happy HTC applying. Hopefully see you in China soon. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe. Um, I post videos sporadically, not super consistently because I work as a teacher, so I do get really busy, but I do post. There's already a bunch of videos on here um, that you can watch anyway, uh, get through, and then I'll be posting, you know, I don't know, once in a month or a couple of weeks. Sometimes I post once every week, and then sometimes I post once a month. So that's my life. Okay, guys. Thank you and see you soon. Bye.